Hey there! Welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. My name is Ko Shukuna and I am here for a little bit of inspiration or perhaps a little bit of a push or a nudge into your creative habit. And today I want to talk about greens because often people ask me how to capture greens in your sketchbook. And of course, just like with anything that you draw, there isn't one way to do it. So today I am going to do a drawing and you might want to draw along with me, capturing those greens. And then next week I will also show you a few more examples of how to capture greens. And the funny thing is, it's not at all about the color green. Of course, you can mix all sorts of greens with your watercolor palette and uh, I am doing that today as well with my in my sketchbook but most often when you want to capture trees and leaves and flowers and bushes and grass it isn't particularly about the green that you see it isn't even particularly about the shapes that you see, it's all about mark making. And there's a certain gesture, like a looseness, a playfulness that um, helps to indicate like the wind in the leaves that will all really um, uh, give you that extra feeling of green. Because we are surrounded by green, especially in summer and in spring. In spring everything explodes and then in summer we are just surrounded by so much green. It's there and it brings so much life and it will also bring a lot of life to your drawing. So be gutsy, be courageous and um, just do it. Just throw in all the art tools that you have. That's what I'll do today. I have no idea where it will go, how it will end, but I do know that it will be fun. Today I am using this website, windowswap.com. And on this website, you can find videos of windows from all around the world. And you just pick one and it's smart to use the loop button so that you have all the time in the world to look out of this window. This is in Canada and I chose it because of all the greens. So let's dive in. I am going to start with that balcony because that will give me some really good reference points to work off from. And I might have actually started too high up on the page, but that's how it goes when you are drawing and you are diving in enthusiastically. I do like not planning too much. I love the surprises that my sketchbook can give me or that I give myself. I am now working with a brush pen because that way I move fast. I am able with a light touch to create some shapes, but not too detailed because I don't think detail matters for the drawing I want to make. Sometimes I do want details, sometimes I really don't. With the brush pen you can easily also create contrast because you can easily add dark shapes and I might actually create a whole dark shape for the balcony but first I'll draw in these plants because I want those to stand out in the foreground so now I am starting to plan a little bit thinking about what I want to emphasize on in this drawing so this bit I won't add any color to. I'm not really paying much attention to the shapes of the plants that I'm drawing because I feel like I want to capture the vibe of it rather than trying to capture the exact shapes of the leaves. Sometimes I do love sitting down at a plant or a shrubbery or whatever to really study the shapes of the leaves. That can be so rewarding and relaxing and meditative, but that is not my goal for this drawing. I'll put this all in like a contour or how do you say, just dark. It'll be all dark so I don't need to worry about any details. And this might be a completely wrong choice, I don't know. But there's not really right and wrong when you are drawing. Just follow whatever your guts tell you. Your gut tells you, I don't know. Just be courageous and go with your flow, that's important. You also need to trust the process 
for example, as I was putting that black shape in, I was like, oh, that could be a mistake. But I'm also trusting process and trusting that once I move further in this drawing, things will sort of fall into each other. Things will make sense. Okay, so I have found my foreground here. I think to get a little bit of balance into this drawing, I will move on with this brush pen just to put some dark marks in there and just to quickly capture some of those plant shapes in there. Again, I'm really not paying attention to the exact shape of the leaves because this bush is too far away to really see the shapes. But I could choose to, you know, I can see they are smaller leaves. So I could choose to make some marks like this, round marks. That makes it a little bit more uh, leafy maybe and a little bit more alive and playful. And I'm just combining my marks. And I see that on this side there's a lot of shadow. So I'm adding a little bit more dark, but I don't want to do too much. I'll leave it like this. I'll come back to it later. This tree is a little bit closer, so I can see that these leaves have a bit more shape, but again, not really trying to capture that shape. And then there's another tree closer by, or maybe this is something that's actually on the balcony. I didn't even notice. I thought it was a tree. Okay. Well, it's a good thing I'm still working with my brush pen here. So it becomes part of that balcony ridge. If you are out and about urban sketching, for greens it's easy to get into details too much. It's a shame to do that because there's so many other things to see. And, you know, the greens aren't always playing the lead role. If they are, take your time for them. Use all your materials or just one and make a study of it. But oftentimes it is part of a story you're telling or, uh, you know, part of a drawing. Then don't lose yourself unless you are having so much fun. Go ahead and do it. But just find the balance between the things in the street, the buildings, the people perhaps, the cars and also the greens. It's all there. So try and capture it in ways that make you feel kind of comfortable and um, have fun. Okay, I'm almost done with the brush pen for now because I don't want it to be the main material, although that might be already too late. <laughs> I think I will add some watercolor, maybe some colored pencil, maybe some crayons. I'll decide once I get there. There's also things in the background. I don't think I want to use the brush pen for that. I mean, that's not the most delicate art tool, so I will find my way through that. There's also a car parked and of course there, there are buildings. So my next step is how much of attention do I want to give those things? I will go with some watercolors now and I am going to avoid using the greens in my watercolor palette. I am going to create my own greens. Okay, so I am just indicating that background. It doesn't have to be super accurate. I keep looking at the view all the time. I'm like looking at the view twice as much as at my drawing. Maybe it needs more definition later on, maybe not. Okay, let's put in the grass. Still, I'm leaving the plants alone that are on the balcony. They give me a nice sense of foreground, background. I also see really strong shadows and that is one of the secrets too, to add shadows. But we're not there yet. I'm adding a little bit of that blue sky that I see here. Because the blue sky gives me an indication of this beautiful day that I see through this window. I feel like I do need to draw that car because it's there. I mean, especially when you are drawing places, if you are doing urban sketching, don't skip those things that make a place urban. And you don't need to be super accurate. Again, just create that shape. Good. Now I want to dive in with some crayons because crayons can give you fantastic textures, but also they resist watercolor. So if you put watercolor on top, you get extra texture and extra fun dynamics, vividness. 
I'm also looking at um, the sunlight, how it falls on the leaves. So there are many, many colors in just one tree. It's not like a tree is green. No, that actually there's a lot of yellow in there, maybe even brown and blue. And you can go as deep with that as you like. It really depends on your subject, on your goal. Do you want to, you know, have those greens and the colors of the greens? Are they playing the main role in your drawing? Or are you actually drawing them because they are part of the view? But basically you want to draw the street and tell a story about that. So it's really all about deciding what you want to include and what you don't want to include. And that way you can create your drawing just the way you like it. And maybe it's not even about telling a story. Maybe the drawing is just about testing out all kinds of tools and mixing them. That's basically what I'm doing right now with this drawing. I don't know where this is. You know, it's just a video of a window somewhere in the world and I'm looking at it because I like it, but I don't know much about it. I can make up all kinds of stories, but I chose it because of the greens and because I want to play with color and texture and try to find out how I can capture all that green without going too far or making a mess or actually because I want to make a mess. Isn't that what creativity is all about? Just playing and having fun. Well, I made this a very colorful tree. I kind of like it. And I'll also add a green watercolor on top. But first I want to maybe add a little bit more color to this one too, because otherwise that one stands out too much in my humble opinion. And I'm just scritchy scratching. I'm not thinking about the shapes of the leaves because you can also just try to draw a tree with a few lines that could also work really well but in the beginning by using that brush pen i chose to do mark making so i'll just keep keep on going with that i like it and i might have, end up with mud i don't know it might just happen i really don't know what i'm doing here just so you know you are following my channel hoping for expertise and then i tell you i don't know what i'm doing that is basically what drawing is about. It's a discovery every time. With every drawing you learn something, you discover. There is no one way to do things. There's no one way to capture greens. So I'll just show you <laughs> a lot of ways. <laughs> and um, hopefully I am showing you also that it's just a lot of fun. And you don't need to cover the whole thing, you know? It's okay to leave things out. It's okay to leave white. It's not a coloring page. It's um, coloring fun, I guess. And look what that white also does on top of the darker watercolor. I love it. These crayons are water resistant, which is important because they also exist as water soluble. That will give you a completely different effect. Once you add water, you can just sort of watercolor with them, which is also really nice. I'm starting to get somewhere. I need watercolors again and I'll fill in those greens in here. See how I'm constantly changing what kind of marks I make? That also brings a lot of vividness, liveliness to your drawing. Just keep it loose and have fun with it. See that effect of the yellow crayon. Isn't that fun? I love it. And I'm not using the greens that are in my palette because I think they can look a little bit too artificial. If you mix your own greens, you get so much more variety in your greens. And that's what we see in nature too, right? Variety, a lot of it. Okay, this is a little bit messy. That's all right. I kind of like it. It still feels like very green. It feels like a tree, maybe a Christmas tree. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> and also I lost the whole shape of the tree because it has more like arms and I just made it like one sort of green cotton wool ball. But it's all fine. I'm okay with it. I can also add a little bit marks on top, but I'm fine with it. I think if I add too much, it starts to become a bit too fiddly and I don't want that. Now the road seems too white because I want the white in the foreground to stand out and now it doesn't feel right. So I am going to mix a little bit of gray, mixing some blue and some brown that I already had on the palette. 
washing it down with quite some water so that it doesn't become too dark and it tones the whole thing down see now that I have this gray we're going to look at the shadows because there are very strong shadows and those shadows are really important too to indicate greens because it's not just a gray blob that you're adding but look at this shadow of this tree it's all textured too and that indicates that it's sunny with strong shades so I might need another layer of shading because it's not dark enough in my opinion see I forgot about the white marks I made look how great that is resisting the watercolor mix a bit more gray a little less water a little bit more pigment don't forget that watercolors always dry a little bit lighter than they look in the first place so if you think Oof, that's too dark you might actually be on the right path you need contrast and if you can add it with shadows that's great okay I am done with this drawing it's full of life I think and that's because of the marks and the textures the different tools that I used and I like it so it says Dimanche Matin's window, which means Sunday morning window. So there we go, on a Tuesday, Sunday morning. That was fun! I like the result. I like the process even better. It was really fun, I enjoyed it. Um, I do feel like this drawing represents the Dimanche Matin window. And um, I really hope that this inspires you to draw some greens this week you can also just use a black pen to do it you don't need all the colors in the world but it will be fun to use all your art tools and just test them out and find your way through the greens around you uh, next week i will show you more examples of how you can capture greens because it's just endless the possibilities which is amazing and so much fun and um, if you don't want to miss out on any of my videos, then please subscribe to this channel. That would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.